Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and this is my review of the fifth episode of Strange New Worlds called Spock Amok. And the episode begins with a remake of the scene from the classic TOS episode Amok Time, in which Spock had to fight Kirk to the death on the Vulcan planet, and they did a pretty good job of remaking the same set and props, and even use the same exact music from that classic scene, you know, the and so all of that was kind of funny and visually entertaining. They kind of did it in a respectful way to the original because of how similar it was and yet looked modern at the same time. So I kind of enjoyed that for what it was. But ultimately the scene was kind of pointless as it's revealed to be just a dream that Spock is having in which his human side and his Vulcan side have to fight each other. And then Spock wakes up because it was all a dream, so ultimately the scene was kind of pointless, but it was still fun as if I'm watching a parody of the old show, but at least it was good parody. And it was especially funny how he even got cut in the same way as Kirk did in the original when he had that small scratch on his chest with the uniform uh, ripping off. And the same thing happens with the human Spock here. And then Spock wakes up because it's all a dream that he's having. And so ultimately the scene is kind of pointless, but it was at least done well. And the rest of this episode was very lighthearted and comedic, so I did kind of enjoy it. But there was nothing really amazing in it, except maybe the special effects. And uh, visually I think the show might be the best Star Trek ever, because they finally do what I always beg them to do, which is show us a place we would want to be in which is beautiful and bright and colorful and all of that. So that is something that this show is excellent at. And I really love that new Starbase with the forest in it, like in Silent Running, and they go to some shore live in there in this episode. And so I do like it because I love nature as much as I love uh, beautiful futuristic settings. And so I love this combination that they do in the show. There are some continuity issues with that whole Starbase with the forest. I will get to that later. But I do like the idea of it and I love it visually and also the friendliness among the crew, the fact that uh, they're actually having fun for a change, characters being friendly and playful and all of that, even though in some places I would question the maturity level of some of the bridge crew which are supposed to be the responsible officers and yet they're behaving like silly children playing on the ship and so I enjoyed those scenes in one aspect, but they kind of annoyed me in another because I can't imagine any of the older Star Trek characters behaving in such a manner unless they were being affected by mind-altering substance or alien influence or whatever, so I wish they would have had an excuse like that in this episode to explain away why senior officers would behave in the way they do, including doing dangerous pranks in the ship even though the ship was empty at the time so we can explain that the way no one would see that no one would know that they did any of that but still some of that annoyed me a little bit why would the adult officers behave like children on the ship doing dangerous pranks and uh, i even zoomed in on that list of tasks they had to do they basically discovered that the lower decks on the ship are doing all these games against regulations and so they decide to do it themselves to better understand the crew and so they play games in the turbo lift and they stun each other in the corridor and they transport each other while chewing gum to see if they will regain the taste of the gum which annoyed me because it made me remember a scene in TNG in which Dr. Crusher went into the holodeck and she was given a chewing gum and she didn't know what it was and so she swallows it instead of chewing it because she never had a gum before and yet here they're uh, chewing gum in the ship and they're going outside to sign the oldest hole plating which was never replaced and it's in the front of the saucer section and that made me remember Star Trek Discovery in which all of the front of the ship was completely blown out in that final battle against control and yet in this episode they stand on the front of the saucer in the place that was completely blown up in Star Trek Discovery and they say that's the place that was never replaced on the whole of the ship so that's the kind of continuity issue I have with the show and I have some more examples when you look closely at that list of tasks, uh, you can see that one of them was to smuggle a Chiribble somewhere on the ship, and that makes no sense because they shouldn't really know where Chiribbles are at this point. I know that in one of the short tracks they did have the Tribbles, but at least it wasn't on the Enterprise, so you can say maybe the Enterprise crew are not yet familiar with Tribbles, because, you know, in the original episode when Uhura first sees a Tribble, 
She asks what is that? She never heard about tribbles and that guy selling them said that he found them in the far corners of the galaxy, something like that. And yet everyone in Starfleet knows what tribbles are 10 years before that. And so how come Uhura never heard about it if that was an assignment given to all the lower decks, all the cadets and ensigns? So how come Uhura never heard about it? She never read that list which contained smuggling a tribble on the ship a decade before anyone knew about tribbles. And isn't that something dangerous? Isn't that something that can screw up the whole ship? And maybe it was uh, the old tribbles before they got augmented by that idiot guy in one of the short tracks. Maybe all of this is taking place before that. And so maybe tribbles are harmless at this point in history. I guess, you know, Lorca also had a tribble in his ready room, which never multiplied and took over the ship. So I'm guessing all of this takes place before that short track when tribbles got augmented. And so again, I guess I can come up with excuses and that is something very small and obscure on a list that you can barely see on screen, but still it kind of bugs me that they are not paying attention to continuity. Another example is Nurse Chapel not wanting to be in the relationships and saying that she only goes on casual relationships and nothing serious. And there was even a mention of her being with a woman at some point in the past or something like that. So fine, I guess they have to do that in all the new shows. They have to check that box. And so she says that she's never in a relationship. But in TOS, in one of her first appearances, it was specifically stated that she has a fiancé. And even it was implied that she only joined the starship in the hopes of finding him because he got lost somewhere in space and presumed dead, and she joined the starship with the hopes of one day reuniting with him. And yet in this show there is no mention of that at all. And also in that same episode she also asks Spock if he was ever engaged. And yet in this episode of Strange New Worlds she's openly talking with Spock about his future wife and the relationship problems and all of that. So how is that possible if she never knew he was engaged later on? And how come she says she's never in any serious relationship when she's supposed to be engaged with Dr. Corby? I guess all of that can happen later on. Maybe everything we see here is before she got engaged to him and so maybe we'll get to see that later in the show, but I kind of doubt it. I kind of have the sense that they simply don't care about the continuity. And another continuity issue is having to do with Starbase 1, which I love visually. I love those forests. I love seeing them inside and out. So all of that is beautiful. I love it visually, but I am annoyed at the fact that they said that that's the same Starbase which was damaged in uh, Star Trek Discovery. And that's something that we actually saw in Star Trek Discovery, that the Klingons took over that star base and killed everyone in it. And we didn't see those forests around it. So I guess maybe they got ejected before that battle and survived it. And then later on got reattached after the star base was repaired. But uh, it kind of bugged me that the star base is at Jupiter's orbit in the show and yet I distinctly remember that the Klingons were going to invade the solar system but didn't, they retreated before they ever got to Jupiter and I do remember a scene when they did attack a star base one which was outside the solar system so I assumed it's not the same base, that maybe it simply got rebuilt closer to Earth and it's not the same star base as we saw in Discovery and yet in this episode Spock specifically says that's the same star base. He says it got repaired after the Klingon War and so I went back to Discovery to rewatch the scenes with that star base and they specifically said that the star base is at a distance of 100 AU from Earth and so that's a long way outside of the solar system. So how come that star base which uh, in the first episode of this show Pike said that it was the first star base ever built and it was built next to those forests and so it always had the forest and yet during the Klingon war I guess they detached the forest to protect them and the star base was somehow out of the solar system when it got attacked by the Klingons and then a few months later I guess they towed it back to Jupiter's orbit and they reattached the forest again and so I guess I can come up with excuses and explanations but it still makes all of it some kind of fishy because they are not paying attention to their own continuity. And the same with the Enterprise refit because didn't we see the Enterprise being totally repaired in the end of season 2 of Discovery and going out into space with Pike in command? in the end of season 2 of Discovery, so how come when this show starts the Enterprise is back and the space dock once again undergoing repairs and refits which also make the interior of the Enterprise look totally different and Pike is depressed on Earth and they're not sure if he wants to come back or not. So when exactly did it happen that the Enterprise once again had to come back into refit and Pike suddenly became depressed when he wasn't depressed in the end of the season 2 of Discovery? 
and the interior of the Enterprise suddenly got changed completely for no reason when the ship was fully repaired in the end of season 2 of Discovery with the same exact corridors we saw in Discovery and suddenly for some reason they once again brought it back for another refit and somehow forgot that the front of the ship was completely blown up a few months earlier and everyone thinks that uh, the front of the saucer has the original whole plating which was never replaced that's what they say in the dialogue so it seems to me as if they're not paying attention to their own continuity i'm not even talking about the rest of the star trek franchise but they're not keeping attention to the continuity of their own show with star trek discovery which is supposed to be in the same timeline according to their own dialogue because they even mentioned michael burnham in the show and all of that and so it's supposed to be a continuation of discovery season two and yet they forgot what happened in discovery and so that kind of thing it makes me laugh that they're not paying attention to even their own continuity. And there was a scene when Nurse Chapel slept Spock uh, while they were talking and that immediately reminded me of that scene from TOS when she was slapping Spock around. So I don't know if that was a deliberate reference or if it's a coincidence. Either way, that's kind of funny. I already made a compilation of that on my other channel. And all the scenes of Spock with his future wife seems like an unnecessary soap opera, especially since we know where it all ends. We know that in the end of the day she will try to get him killed because she doesn't want to marry him. She will fall in love with some other Vulcan and she will try to get Spock killed to get his property and not have to marry him or something. So she's basically evil. She's a psychopath. So how come in this show she's portrayed as this awesome strong woman? If we know that she's a monster or she will turn into a monster somehow later on I guess and so little things like that don't really make sense if we think about them. How come Nurse Chapel had to ask if Spock was ever engaged in that episode of TOS if she already talked with him about his relationship with the Pring years before that. So unless they all get a memory wipe at some point none of this makes sense continuity wise. Unless that was a rhetorical question that she asked him in TOS when she asked, uh, were you ever engaged? Maybe she knew he was, but just wanted to remind him of that, I guess. And so little things like that will make the characters seem either idiotic or memoryless or just extremely sarcastic back in TOS. And so all of this uh, extra backstory will not add some uh, layers of substance to those scenes of TOS. Instead, it will simply make those scenes kind of ridiculous if we ever watch them after watching this show. And also the kind of humor between Spock and Tapring about, you know, duty versus relationship and Spock gets called away on his duty and Tapring gets offended even though she's a Vulcan, but she's obviously angered by that. All of that stuff reminds me of some of the scenes in the Orville between Bortus and Clyden when Bortus came home late and all of that. At least in the Orville they used it for comedy and it was actually funny, while in this show I think it could have been done better, I think it could have been funnier. And some aliens come aboard the station to negotiate potentially joining the Federation. And I did kind of like these aliens because they had the interesting trait of becoming like the people they're talking with. So the first time we see them talking with some Tellarites and then they become aggressive and rude just like the Tellarites are. And when they meet Pike suddenly they become friendly like Pike. And later when they talk with Spock they become all logical like Vulcans. And so in the very end they did agree to join the Federation which is nice I guess and they had that sail ship which is uh, beautiful and so I did like all those elements in this episode and there was the comedic plot about Spock and his future wife accidentally swapping bodies because they tried to do a mind meld and accidentally switched bodies which is something that is kind of a, a trope that so many comedy movies did that. Uh, I think it was okay in this episode. I wish they would have done some more comedy with that idea. And uh, I think the actors are all fine. But again, I wish they would have had some more distinctive personalities and mannerisms that we could actually tell that they're being each other in that scene. But both of them are Vulcans and so both of them behave so similarly anyway that you can't really tell that they're playing each other when they're in the other one's body. And the doctor immediately knows how to zap them back to normal by zapping their brains to switch them back to their own bodies. And then Spock screams in pain and that's something kind of strange in the show that so often we have scenes of Spock screaming with pain as if he has a really low pain tolerance and that kind of annoys me a little bit because you know Spock in the original he had so much control over his emotions and his reactions he would never I never imagined him to scream in pain from some physical discomfort and so that's something that annoys me a little bit that in the new show they constantly have to show him screaming and uh, being angry or cracking jokes and all of that kind of stuff which doesn't fit the character in my opinion. 
Also, there was the obligatory scene of showing an obnoxious white Vulcan man who has to get knocked out by a woman because he was being so obnoxious. So that was also kind of random with no real connection to anything. So that was uh, part of the checklist, I guess. And it was also strange how the doctor and the nurse, they all knew all about the Vulcan Katra and Vulcan mind merge and all of that was so well known among everyone. And so it again bugs me because in TOS it was all revealed as if for the first time, you know, Spock said that it's the first time ever he's doing a mind meld with a human in one episode of TOS. And yet in this show, he already had mind melds with Nuni and Singh. And also technically he did a mind meld with a human when he mind melded with the Red Angel in season 2 of Discovery. And by the time of TOS he completely forgot that he mind melded with a human in the past. I guess he doesn't consider Noonien Singh a human. Maybe he considers her a different species because she's augmented or something. I guess we'll wait and see. I'm betting we'll see him mind melding with many more humans by the time we get to TOS. And so that makes him a total liar in the time of TOS. And so once again I say... It would have been better off for the show to simply admit being a remake, simply admit being in a new timeline, and then it will solve all these little continuity problems with TOS. But still, I would expect them to at least pay attention to their own continuity and not make mistakes in the continuity with Star Trek Discovery, which they seem to totally forget about. So those are the little things that annoyed me, but overall I enjoyed this episode's lightheartedness and the fact that it's usually beautiful and so I do think the show is much better than Discovery and definitely better than Picard which was just horrendous in how cheap everything was and how bad the writing was and how annoying the characters were and so this show is far better and much closer to how Star Trek should be and it was kind of weird how similar it was to the Orville especially to the new episode of the Orville which came out at the same time and yet had so many similar things in both of them the ship was docked at space dock undergoing a refit and in both of them people went out on a spacewalk and looked at a piece of hull plating which was stated to be an older one and in the Orville they also went into a gas giant to hide from an enemy ship and then ejected something to make it explode to make the enemy ship think they exploded just like in the previous episode of this show so it's kind of weird how similar both of those shows suddenly became and I don't think these shows are spying and stealing from each other. I think this was a coincidence, but I do think it shows that both of them take their inspiration from the older Star Trek shows and basically doing a remake of them. And I wish both of them would be a little bit more imaginative and show us uh, things which we didn't see before and not just making remakes of ideas from the past. And so that's my wish. I hope both shows will continue to be good and improve. So that's really all I had to say about it for today. If you enjoy my videos, please hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed to all my channels, click the notification bell below to get updates of new videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.